had the opportunity of being the brand manager to drive the car uh, around uh, towns around the country uh, for probably the last year to two years uh, and had a, a lot of reaction just from the normal people on the street. And something that really jumps out here at me, I was driving a black SS and I pulled in for gas and I literally shut the gas station down. I had people from one side of the gas station who were pumping fuel into their vehicle, stop what they were doing and come over and talk to me about what a great looking car this was. Styling was one of the critical elements that we wanted to ensure that was very expressive, but that it would appeal to both a male and female perspective. We did extensive research up front with the theme development to develop a complementary design that would accomplish that. The heritage design elements of Monte Carlo are important because our buyer is looking for something that's unique from a styling statement that sets the car off from the rest of the vehicles on the highway. When our buyer pulls up to a stoplight, they like to see that other drivers are recognizing their car and them behind the wheel. The studio chief and his team went back into the archives to look at styling cues that have been signature elements of the Monte Carlo brand. In doing so, they identified core elements that they wanted to replicate in the new car with a contemporary version. These included things as our short deck, our long hood, and our bold sculpted lines over the wheel openings. They also looked at some of the jewel elements that have been unique to the brand, such as the headlight treatment, as well as our vertical stack tail lamp. Recently, just driving to Monte Carlo, and the place I seem to get a lot of attention is gas stations. You know, you're, you're sitting there pumping your gas, and, and next thing you know, you've got two or three people around you. And I typically just invite them to, to sit in the vehicle and, and get a look at the inside because the inside of the vehicle is just as interesting and well put together as the outside. We also looked at a lot of amenities from an interior standpoint that would appeal particularly to the woman buyer. Many of the things have been focused on ergonomic layout, large, easy to access controls, controls that could be comfortably operated with long fingernails or gloves on. In the 2000 model year, we expect that we'll build and sell roughly 72,000 Monte Carlos. One third of those will be SS variety and two thirds will be the LS. But Chevrolet is real proud of this car and we've had some good feedback from our early customer indication and we expect there's a lot of upside in there. We wouldn't be surprised at all if we see it go into the mid-80s as far as the numbers of units in that first and second, maybe even third years. The Monte Carlo LS has been designed for the buyer looking for a personal luxury statement or an expressive coupe that delivers from a styling perspective and has more than expected amenities in the interior. The Monte Carlo SS ratchets up the styling statement exterior-wise with componentry to enhance the car visually, but then we deliver the goods from a performance side. We've added unsurpassed horsepower and segment-leading torque to the 3800 powertrain. In my opinion, the Monte Carlo doesn't have any competition in the market. We have a lot of people that are in our segment. It's going to be the Honda Accord, the new Solera by Toyota, the Chrysler products, the Avenger and the Sebrings. But our car stands apart from those others. I think we have more expressive styling, and of course we have a size that's consistent with what our customer base is telling us. It's a car for mature adults, not necessarily the 25 year old. Monte Carlo comes right on the heels of the Impala. It's another what I call mega brand. Uh, something that people are very familiar with and it comes from a team that has really delivered not only outstanding style, outstanding performance, but absolutely outstanding quality. I think the key thing to remember about the new Monte Carlo that it is all new from the ground up. It embodies a very unique styled statement that complements the heritage of the brand over time. Clearly when we were doing the development and testing work of the theme, people who saw the design of the car very quickly identified it as the next generation Monte Carlo. Not only does the thing look good and go well, but you can do lots of things and you can take lots of people in it. Uh, it's really wrapped around the driver. It's really designed to be a driver's car. We've got a great car here. We've got an absolute winner. 
another fantastic new product for Chevrolet. You just heard the key people on the Monte Carlo brand team tell how this all-new 2000 Monte Carlo was designed and built to meet and exceed your customers' expectations. Now it's time to take an up-close look at the major design elements and features you can present and demonstrate. In this product presentation, we'll focus on the four brand characteristics that best define the all-new Monte Carlo. We'll examine its styling that's classy with a wild streak the performance features that give Monte Carlo the heart and soul of a champion, how it offers comfort and safety for real life, and its Chevy quality, reliability, and durability. So, let's get started. There are three driving influences that shaped Monte Carlo's bold and expressive styling. Its heritage, customer expectations, and its racing tradition. Designers began with a mission of capturing elements of Monte Carlo's rich heritage. The goal was to make sure that when people first see this car, there's no doubt in their minds that it's a new Monte Carlo and nothing else. So they gave it a long hood line and a short rear deck, just like the great Monte Carlos we all remember. You can also see its bloodlines in the vertical tail lamps, offering a contemporary twist on the design from the 70s and 80s. Even the trademark night emblem received a facelift for the new millennium. At the same time, consumer clinic participants made it clear that the new Monte Carlo also had to have a contemporary and unique look, one that gets them noticed at traffic lights. The bold headlamps and front fascia treatment, sculpted front and rear quarter panels, and a wide, aggressive stance all help give the new Monte Carlo a look that is all its own. The original Monte Carlo didn't have a sedan counterpart, and neither does this one. The only exterior components Monte Carlo shares with the 2000 Impala are the center high-mounted stop lamp and the door handles. Nor does it share exterior panels with other General Motors coupes. It's pure Monte Carlo from front to back. Finally, GM race shop engineers worked as part of the Monte Carlo design team from the very start. They helped integrate the aerodynamic characteristics of a great race car into the shape of the production Monte Carlo. As a result, the new Monte Carlo NASCAR uses production sheet metal for the hood, roof, and deck lid. With so much production sheet metal from this car being used on the NASCAR racing version, you could say that Monte Carlo is putting the stock back into stock car racing. Chevrolet's involvement in motorsports is truly a win-win situation. For example, on race cars, low wind resistance means it takes less horsepower to get up to racing speed. On production cars, Good aerodynamic properties help contribute to better fuel economy and reduced wind noise. The same is true for improved downforce. On racing cars, it means better adhesion to the track. On a production vehicle, it helps aid overall stability. A special video segment on the new Monte Carlo NASCAR follows this product presentation. The passion and commitment to winning that you see from Chevrolet on the track is also under the sheet metal of this 2000 Monte Carlo. It truly has the heart and soul of a champion. Building a winning race car requires keen attention to every detail. One of the best examples of this commitment on the new production Monte Carlo is its total performance system. Like their race team counterparts, Monte Carlo's engineering team knew that great performance requires many systems and components working in harmony. Monte Carlo's total performance system starts with its great structure. And there are a few things you can do to illustrate Monte Carlo's solid structure to your customers. Open the door and you can see this one-piece door ring and rear quarter panel. This design eliminates welds and seams. The benefits are that it minimizes dimensional variation which helps ensure a precise fit every time. And it minimizes the potential for air and water leaks. Monte Carlo's structure is also supported by floor pan cross members that span the width of the car. And the magnesium cross car beam, or mag beam, that runs from side to side behind the instrument panel. While many vehicles have cross car beams, the mag beam's detailed structural design forms the foundation for many of the instrument panel components, including the radio, HVAC system, the passenger side airbag module, and the steering column assembly. 
This design helps reduce vibrations, especially those in the instrument panel that can occur over time. The mag beam also contributes to the car's tight steering feel, and it helps minimize steering wheel shake at idle. You can demonstrate this at the beginning of a demonstration drive by starting the car and letting it idle. Then have your customer gently rest his or her hands on the steering wheel. They won't feel any excessive shake. With the wheel turned, you can see part of one of Monte Carlo's most important structural components. It's aluminum engine cradle. The cradle forms the foundation for the front suspension and steering geometry. Monte Carlo is the only car in its class, including its General Motors platform mates, to utilize an aluminum engine cradle. The cradle is 30% lighter than the steel component originally slated for use in the Monte Carlo. It's extremely strong and corrosion resistant. The design is also very stiff. This stiffness allows engineers to more precisely tune the car's suspension and handling characteristics and minimize vibration. Under the hood, you can also see Monte Carlo's strut tower to tower brace. It connects the two strut towers to enhance the structural integrity of the car. The same for these two corner braces. Think of them just like you would of corner braces in a wood structure. They help tie it all together for strength and rigidity. Which brings us to our biggest point about Monte Carlo's structure. You gotta drive it to feel it. Now sure, you can show your customers the one-piece door rings, aluminum engine cradle, and the tower to tower strut brace. But getting them behind the wheel brings it all to life. So plan your demo drive routes to highlight Monte Carlo's solid feel, its precise steering, and its crisp suspension. It all starts with great structure. The engines are one of the key differences between Monte Carlo LS and SS. LS is powered by the 3400 V6. It generates 180 horsepower and 205 foot-pounds of torque, segment leading base horsepower and torque among its primary competitors. The 3400 V6 is a great fit with the LS because it offers impressive all-round performance and it runs smooth and quiet. It's exactly the kind of performance people demand from a personal luxury coupe. This engine also delivers impressive economy with preliminary estimates at 20 miles per gallon in the city and 32 on the highway. Customers who had the chance to see and drive early versions of the new Monte Carlo said its performance clearly stood out, saying it has the go to match its show. They also noted that some competitors seem to be all show and no go. This SS ratchets up Monte Carlo's performance with a 200 horsepower 3800 V6. It also generates 225 foot-pounds of torque. Versions of the 3800 V6 have earned a spot on Ward's Auto World's list of best engines for three years in a row. What's most exciting about this engine for Monte Carlo enthusiasts is that it lives up to the car's SS badging. In fact, here's how it compares to the original V8-powered 1983 Monte Carlo SS. Today's 3800 V6 outpowers the 1983 5.0-liter V8 by 20 horsepower. It outruns it both 0 to 60 and in the quarter mile. Plus, it gets better fuel economy. All of this in a technologically advanced engine that has the reliability and low operating costs you expect. The engines are teamed to an electronically controlled four-speed automatic transmission with overdrive. You'll probably have to call attention to how smooth and quiet it shifts every time you're on a demo drive. Otherwise, your customers might not even notice it. Both Monte Carlo models feature a four-wheel, fully independent suspension, but they're set up a little differently to meet the expectations of their target buyers. LS's ride and handling suspension is tuned to provide a pleasing ride, precise handling, and minimize vibration. SS models are equipped with a standard sport suspension package, which is precisely tuned to provide more aggressive handling performance, the kind you expect from a Monte Carlo wearing the SS badge. Monte Carlo is the only car among its chief competitors with standard 16-inch wheels and tires. Dodge Avenger, Chrysler Sebring, Toyota Camry Solara, and Honda Accord Coupe are all equipped with 15-inch wheels and tires. These large P225-60R16 Touring radials not only give Monte Carlo a bold and aggressive look, they also provide great all-round performance. SS features RSA Performance Touring tires for more aggressive road feel and these standard five-spoke sport aluminum wheels. LS and SS are equipped with standard four-wheel disc brakes and ABS. The front brake rotors are the same ones certified for use on the Impala Police Package. Now, your customers might not ever need brake rotors that are certified for police use, but 
it's nice to know they're there if they ever do. A low tire pressure monitoring system is also standard. It works by continually measuring the rotational speed of each wheel. If it detects that one wheel is rotating faster than the others, which happens when a tire is low, it alerts the driver via the instrument cluster message center. This early warning can help the driver find service before further air loss or tire damage can occur. Monte Carlo SS includes standard traction control that allows the front wheels to make the best use of available traction on low coefficient surfaces like snow, sand, or gravel. It does so by reducing engine power and modulating the brakes to help prevent the wheels from spinning. With engines and suspensions that are worthy of its name, Monte Carlo's total performance system makes this car a true joy to drive. Over the years, Monte Carlo has also set the standards for personal luxury. Now the new 2000 Monte Carlo builds on this tradition by delivering comfort and safety for real life. Monte Carlo's cockpit is designed around a four-point driver interface system that helps maximize the experience between driver and machine. Specifically, the four points are ergonomic driving controls that are intuitively placed and easy to operate, improved seating that was developed in conjunction with a back specialist to help ensure firm and comfortable support, excellent visibility all around, and chassis to cabin harmony that delivers a solid and tight driving feel. Monte Carlo Comfort begins with its roominess. Offering more than 98 cubic feet of passenger space, it's noticeably roomier than Sebring, Avenger, Solara, and Accord. But this extra room doesn't come at the expense of maneuverability and agility. Monte Carlo still has a tighter turning diameter than all but the Accord Coupe. This car's roominess is complemented by several smart car features that help make day-to-day -day life easier, like a 17-function instrument cluster message center. It notifies the driver of key vehicle operations, including when it's time to change the oil and if the tire pressure monitoring system detects one of the tires is low. The standard power locks include lockout protection. This feature prevents the door from locking when the car is off and the key is left in the ignition. You can demonstrate this feature by placing the key in the ignition, then trying to lock the car with the power button. The door automatically unlocks. There's also a starter interrupt. It prevents you from accidentally engaging the starter if the engine is already running, which is especially important because the engine is so smooth and quiet. It's easy to demonstrate. Just start the car and turn the key again. You don't hear that awful grinding sound because the starter won't engage when the car is running. Monte Carlo also offers an impressive package of safety features. It starts by meeting 2003 model year federal standards for enhanced head impact protection. This is thanks in part to energy absorbing materials in the A-pillar and headliner, thicker gauge steel at the belt line, and high strength door beams. Daytime running lamps with automatic lamp control, which turns on and off the headlights, are also standard. Inside, child safety seat top tether anchors are integrated into the parcel shelf behind all three rear seat positions. These anchors provide a place to secure the rear tethers on today's child seats. And back here, the center high-mounted stop lamp is a light-emitting diode, or LED, that illuminates more quickly than an incandescent bulb. It's a little thing, but sometimes fractions of a second count. Monte Carlo also offers an optional dealer-installed trunk safety release that can help someone who's trapped in the trunk to escape. Monte Carlo owners who see their cars as personal indulgences won't be disappointed. It's very well equipped. The full center console has generous storage room for personal items, including this concealed compartment in the center armrest. There are two front cup holders, or smokers can add an ashtray. There are also two cup holders for rear seat passengers in the center fold-down armrest. Air conditioning, including driver and front passenger controls and a special pollen filter on SS models, intermittent wipers, power windows with driver side expressed down, power mirrors, a rear window defogger, and a power trunk release are all standard. You can see Monte Carlo's thoughtful design in the trunk, too. Notice how the deck lid struts don't intrude into the cargo area. This not only helps maximize usable cargo room, it prevents the struts from crushing or scraping cargo that's inside. 
The trunk itself has 15.8 cubic feet of room. As you probably expect by now, that's significantly more than the competition can offer. A split folding rear seat is standard on both models. It gives you the flexibility to carry additional cargo, including long items like skis, and you can still leave room for passengers in the back. The new Monte Carlo also offers several optional interior comfort and security features that owners can choose to fit their needs. These include power driver and passenger seats, leather trim seating surfaces, heated front seats, heated outside rear view mirrors, and an electrochromic rear view mirror that automatically dims to reduce the glare from the headlights of approaching vehicles at night. An up-level dual playback CD and cassette sound system is also available. The optional overhead driver information convenience center incorporates a trip computer with outside temperature, compass, and other key readouts, plus the Homelink universal garage door opener with three separate buttons. This feature also includes a vehicle alarm system. Now, you might not always think of the radio as a security feature, but it's true on Monte Carlo. All available radios, including standard AM-FM stereo with cassette player, feature radio data system technology, known as RDS. Two of the key features RDS offers are its ability to interrupt radio programming, or even a cassette or CD, with traffic and weather bulletins, and its ability to seek for radio stations based on the driver's desired type of programming. Here's how to work these features. To activate the traffic and weather alert feature, simply press the TRAF button on the radio. You'll see the TRAF light illuminating the radio display. Now, when emergency traffic or weather information is being broadcast, RDS will automatically interrupt the selected programming source. To turn the feature off, simply push the TRAF button again. To seek for radio stations with certain program types, first select the programming by turning the P-type knob until the selection appears on the display. Then press the Seek button, and RDS will automatically seek stations with that type of programming. For the ultimate in round-the-clock security, Monte Carlo can be equipped with GM's optional OnStar system. It's dealer-installed on Monte Carlo, and for 2000, OnStar offers two levels of service, the safety and security plan and the premium service plan. Complete details on both plans are included in the safety section of your 2000 passenger car product guide. Finally, a big part of the security anybody feels about owning a vehicle is that it's a well-built, high-quality car. Monte Carlo buyers can take heart in knowing that this car has all the Chevy quality, reliability, and durability they expect. One of the biggest selling points of the new Monte Carlo's quality, reliability, and durability is its heritage. And you don't have to look any further back than the last few years. Monte Carlo is again being built at GM's Oshawa, Ontario assembly plant, which is also home to Impala and Lumina production. The facility earned J.D. Power & Associates Bronze Award for quality in 1999. But Monte Carlo's QRD is more than just where it's built, it's how it's built. Monte Carlo's great structure is an important part of its quality story. It helps reduce the possibility of squeaks, rattles, and leaks that can develop over time. Reliability is further enhanced with a simplified electrical system. It uses multiplexing technology that reduces the number of wires and connections, thereby reducing the chance of something going wrong. The body is made of corrosion-resistant galvanized steel. Every exterior panel except the roof is two-side galvanized steel. All paint colors are base coat clear coat. The protective clear coat that's applied over the base color coat is part of a six-step process that helps protect the finish from environmental elements and helps keep it looking good. The new Monte Carlo has brake cooling ducts for the front rotors and more robust brake pads. They're designed to last up to 40% longer than their predecessors. It's just one of the ways this car is built to help owners enjoy their personal time to its fullest without the time, expense, and worry about routine maintenance. Other examples include the platinum tip spark plugs, designed to last for up to 100,000 miles. The same for its Dexron 3 automatic transmission fluid. The Dex Cool engine coolant doesn't need to be changed for up to five years or 150,000 miles, whichever comes first. Monte Carlo also has a coolant loss protection system. If for some reason the engine loses its coolant, Monte Carlo can still travel up to 50 miles to a service facility. It does this by firing groups of only three cylinders at a time to help keep the engine cool. 
Coolant loss protection and the other QRD features will help give Monte Carlo an important edge in today's competitive market. Make no mistake, just like its racing cousins, this Monte Carlo faces some tough competition. But it has a winning combination of style, performance, comfort, safety, and quality. It carries the Monte Carlo tradition proudly, a tradition of winning. Over the years, Chevrolet Monte Carlo has successfully delivered a unique combination of style, performance, and personal luxury that has meant many things to many people. But on the racetrack, Monte Carlo has meant just one thing, winning. Monte Carlo is the winningest nameplate in NASCAR Winston Cup history, helping Chevrolet capture 13 of the last 16 NASCAR Manufacturer Championships. Chevrolet has been involved in NASCAR since 1971. Our involvement really has been a long-term strategy versus a trendy sponsorship in a rapidly growing sport. The NASCAR Winston Cup Series is the fastest growing professional spectator sport in America. More than six million people attend races every year. On television, NASCAR's popularity is second only to NFL football with an average of more than eight and a half million viewers tuning into each network telecast. One of the great benefits to our product portfolio is how consumers perceive our constant winning on the track translating to improvements in product quality, durability, and reliability. For the all-new 2000 Monte Carlo, the bond between the production car and the race car is stronger than ever. At the beginning of the Monte Carlo development, GM Race Shop engineers and design staff worked together to develop a car that would be successful on the racetrack and look good on the highway. While we were there, we contributed some attributes that we felt were important in making a good race car. Uh, those included a round, soft front end, an upper which is as tapered and, and narrow as possible, and a high rear deck coupled with a wide rear bumper. Everywhere where air leaves the car, we want to find as, as sharp a trailing edge as possible. By integrating the GM Motorsports engineers along with the studio chief to develop the aerodynamic profile, we've been able to establish a win-win benefit both for on-track racing, but for the consumers that use our vehicles on a daily basis. These include such things as reduced drag, which allows a race car to come up to speed with less horsepower, but from a consumer perspective, translates to better fuel economy. In addition to the aerodynamic properties, we also worked on downforce. Now, downforce on a race car provides a better stability as you enter the turns at high speeds. From a consumer perspective, it translates to increased stability at expressway speeds. The final benefit, however, is just improvement of the aerodynamic profile that reduces some of the wind noise that enters the passenger compartment that makes it a quiet driving experience. Thanks to the partnership between the Monte Carlo design team and the GM race shop, when the 2000 Monte Carlo NASCAR takes its place on the starting grid at the Daytona 500, it will bear a remarkable resemblance to the production car. We have the most stock in stock car racing by literally using production componentry from our street car on the race car that you see on the track on a weekly basis. The objective in developing the 2000 Monte Carlo Winston Cup car was to stay as stock as possible. We were able to use the stock hood, the stock roof, the stock deck lid. In addition, we tried to use the stock shape of parts wherever possible. The rear bumper is stock in shape, but a composite material to withstand the impacts of cars against cars. And the windshield is uh, stock shape, but made out of Lexan. In support of our objective of making the race car as much like the production car as possible, 11 of the 19 templates NASCAR uses to police the shape of the race car are made so that they fit the production car. Of those that don't fit the production car, they're primarily because the NASCAR overall length had to be four inches longer than the stock car and because we have to raise the hood to fit a carbureted V8 under the hood. 
In addition to developing the body shape of the racing Monte Carlo, GM's race shop is constantly working with the race teams to help ensure that they're getting the best possible aerodynamic performance. We do this by, first of all, providing wind tunnel testing to each of the teams that uh, competes in the circuit. We assist the teams with track testing of the bodies, which is done, done best at uh, high-speed tracks like uh, Talladega Super Speedway or, or Atlanta Motor Speedway. Uh, we do build a scale model of our race car and we test it in a rolling road scale model wind tunnel which provides uh, data that's hard to get any other way. And uh, finally, uh, we do computational fluid dynamics. That's computer simulation of testing the race car either in a wind tunnel or on the track. Although the most visible benefit of the technology transfer between the racing and production Monte Carlos can be seen in their aerodynamic shapes, there are many other benefits to this win-win partnership. Not only do the teams have to use our sheet metal when they race, they also have to use our engine components. They have to use our engine block, our cylinder heads, and our intake manifolds. As the GM Race Shop engineers work on those components, they develop relationships with racing teams. As we work on the pushrod V8s in the racing engines, we, we push the output to 750 horsepower in the NASCAR racer. When the 3800 was being developed, we sent that cylinder head to Diamond Racing in Michigan to work on the airflow. Their work on the airflow allowed us to make 200 horsepower for the standard SS package engine. Other examples of Monte Carlo's racing technology transfer include the production car's standard four-wheel disc brakes, front brake cooling ducts, strut tower to tower brace, chrome silicon valve springs, and roller follower camshafts. The roots of all these components can be traced back to racing. Another important aspect of technology transfer are the people and engineers that work at General Motors. As the engineers work at the GM race shop, they then move on to different jobs in their career. When they do that, they take the spirit of racing and the can-do attitude to their new assignments. From a retail standpoint, NASCAR and our involvement with motorsports offers a certificate of authenticity for the performance credentials that our Chevrolet products bring to the consumer. In fact, Monte Carlo is the winningest car in NASCAR Winston Cup history. We have a lot of fans out there that like to get behind the wheel of a vehicle and feel that they're driving some of the same products that their favorite race car driver does on the weekend. I know all the Team Monte Carlo race teams are looking forward to getting this car on the track and we think it's what they're going to need to be successful against our competitors. We're excited to say that you'll see the new 2000 Monte Carlo race car at the Daytona 500 coming up in February and stay tuned for the details that will support that exciting event.